So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Health and Wellness Spot. My name is Dr. Lewis and I've uh, come up with another video again that I want to talk to men. Okay, so today I'm talking to men. However, this video again is necessary for women because it affects women indirectly. And that means I'm also talking to women but indirectly. So if you're a man and you're watching this video, kindly watch it to the end. So that again we get to understand the basics that run around health, uh, sexual health in men. So welcome again and today we're talking about erectile dysfunction. What are the causes? What actually is erectile dysfunction? What are the causes? What are the basics? How does it come to occur? Okay. And then what is the management? And if at all, if those drugs that we use to enhance sexual power and our erection will actually make sense. So all that will be covered in this video and I hope you get to learn at the end of the video and get to go take away uh, some points that will help you uh, to enhance your sexual power. So basically what is erectile dysfunction? Now erectile dysfunction is basically defined as the inability to withhold an erection during a sexual process. So it doesn't matter how long you go uh, or how long that sexual process will take. So we can say even 15 minutes, we can say some take 30 minutes, some take an hour. However, it's just basically the inability to maintain an erection during a sexual uh, activity. And this is so embarrassing for some men. Uh, men who experience this, they get to get this low self-esteem. And some of us or some of you have been uh, branded one minute man, however long you've tried to perform. So basically the essence of this video is to try to tell the man not to struggle so much to please women. Again, I want you to know that your penis cannot enlarge. There is no enlargement cream or drug that will uh, help you elongate your penis. So if you have a small penis, that is who you are. You can work with that. You can enhance your, 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 your performance, but you cannot elongate your penis. So this video is here for you again. Okay? So... That is the definition of erectile dysfunction. Now, uh, I've come to realize that in marriages and in most relationships, low libido and erectile dysfunction is a huge problem. And some of your complaints come in uh, uh, handy. You say that uh, possibly it has gotten boring, your, your partner is boring, or you do the same things over and over and it's become monotonous. That could be a factor. Uh, in erectile dysfunction. However, it is a part of the psychological factors that affect erectile dysfunction. So we will tackle the causes, uh, basically around five of, uh, or, or, no, four causes of erectile dysfunction. And in all this, you'll get to classify where you're most affected, okay, and how you'll handle it. So basically, in marriage, the reason why there is uh, these chances of erectile dysfunction and in relationships too, the reasons are just simple. Basically, the modern man has become weak because of dietary modifications. So ever since the diets came into Africa and the dietary modifications uh, started being practiced, the modern, the African man became a weak man. Now, I'm calling this person the modern man. Why? Because the modern man has adapted dietary modifications that are useless, in quotes. So too much carbohydrates, too much sugar, a lot of soda, and the food industry has done it perfectly to make sure that these foods are marketed to you. So that they become available to you and your emotions. So once you start acting on your emotions, then it becomes easier for the food industry to manipulate you into eating these foods and process the carbohydrates. So men have become weak. They eat poor diets. They have grown fat and obese. They have all these metabolic conditions like diabetes and hypertension and cancer. They are always on drugs to uh, treat uh, gastric ulcers. And we said in our previous videos that if at all, uh, you start taking these uh, drugs that treat H. pylori or they treat ulcers, then the end result is a poor quality of sperm and uh, the amount of sperm uh, starts uh, reducing. Okay, So uh, it's high time that we stay sane from drugs, even not unless it's necessary. We use drugs when it's only necessary. Another point is men ejaculate very carelessly. Nowadays men are ejaculating carelessly. You have sex with a woman with just the intention to ejaculate. And that's the reason why when I talk about semen retention as a mode to control your mind and to control your sexual agility, 
most men will start bashing and they'll come out very hard on me. Why? Because they know they are victims of masturbation, pornography, and careless ejaculation. So any woman you, you have an encounter with, you just have the intention to ejaculate. You don't have sex with the intention of enjoying the moment, but you're having sex with the intention of just ejaculating because that is your end goal. Then after you ejaculate, you become a zombie. You can't think right. You start regretting what just happened. And then you start exposing, you, you already exposed yourself to different conditions, maybe an STI or even HIV and AIDS and all this, the happies. So it's high time that men take stand. And again, uh, they're necessary pregnancies. Okay. So men, it's high time you take uh, the front step in this because control of birth is basically uh, in the hands of the man. The man is the one who is responsible for control of birth. It's not the role of the woman. So it really amuses me why men put or force their women on contraceptives. Yet the same men cannot use a condom, they cannot retain their semen, and they have sex with the intention of just ejaculating. And therefore you're messing women. Men are messing women by putting them forcefully on contraceptives. Okay, two uh, methods of contraception. One has to be semen retention, the other one has to be use of condoms. If your woman has to be on contraceptives, then put this woman on uh, IUCD, which is the copper one, not the hormonal one. Okay, so yeah, it has its own challenges. However, uh, we weigh the benefits against the odds. However, the, 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 the burden of birth control lies specifically on the man. But on the contrary, in this modern generation, women are the ones who are taking that role, and that is so disturbing. So, if you ejaculate carelessly, carelessly then definitely you end up having these points, these issues of uh, erectile dysfunction and stuff. Then again, masturbation and pornography, very profound in this modern society. Every man, every woman is masturbating, and this brings problems in, uh, uh, in sexual problems in marriages and relationships. Also, we have obesity. So, we've already said that the man has grown fat, and when a man grows fat, and then you start converting testosterone, which is your male hormone, towards estrogen, which is the female hormone. And this is the reason why men have come out with man boobs. They have come out with these female structures. That's why men nowadays are, are dressing up like women and they are pushing this agenda of uh, homosexuality and stuff. So all these things are coming up because of modifications in diets. So when you grow fat as a man, you're messing your systems up. You're exposing yourself to the female hormones and therefore... You will have a hard time in even ejaculation and uh, erection, okay? You will have a problem because you need testosterone, the male hormone, to help you in ejaculation and also in erection specifically because that is what we are handling today. Number three, men have become alcoholics. So men drink alcohol, men smoke cigarettes, and these are the things, basically the factors that are causing you problems uh, in your relationships because... You might not realize it now, but after some time you'll get to realize that these factors are, these things are trying to, uh, to help you or trying to just mess your system towards uh, erectile dysfunction. Now the last two factors then are basically to be uh, low testosterone and this is both through diets, through workouts and environmental stuff and uh, not having the ability to get access to masculine energy. So if you have feminine energy around you all the time, then you have a problem. Then... Most men are not working out, okay? So there are gyms, yes. However, what do you do with the gym? People go to the gym and lift weights aimlessly. You want to, you want to lift weights to compete. You want to do ego lifting. You end up getting uh, hurt or you're obese and you're walking into a gym and you want to train. You need to lose your weight before you go into the gym to tone that body. So how you work out will also um, enhance how you perform sexually. And therefore, you need... A person, a trainer, who will first of all tell you to edit your diets, first of all let you lose that weight before he even gives you the bar. And now we have problems like depression and men are becoming depressed. I don't believe in clinical depression also. I, also, I just think that this is just an excuse of men not trying to work hard as, uh, as they should. So men have become weak, they share bills with women, they do all this stuff that are effeminate, even feminine, feminine activities, and the market is so hypersexualized. And men are not realizing these things. Men are going in hard on this hypersexualization. And that's the reason why all social media platforms you open, you will see women are naked. Uh, you will see all these things that lure you into pornography and masturbation. And also they destroy your mind. Okay, so once they destroy your mind, then the body follows. So it's high time you work on your mind, and then you work on your health, you work on uh, the network of people who are around you. 
end you will only do these things if you want to do them so you you are the you are the orchestrator of your own uh, problems and solutions so if you want to walk out of depression you will if you don't want you will go ahead and take antidepressants and in this video we will talk about antidepressants and how they affect erection so you'll get to realize men who take antidepressant drugs uh, experience a side effect of these drugs which is erectile dysfunction so you're trying to treat depression and then you end up with erectile dysfunction and that makes it even worse for you as a man because you'll go back to depression again okay and these are the drugs that are highest uh, selling in the market because they know they're capitalizing on your weaknesses so be very keen and be very careful about this so basically those are just factors that i was highlighting about why relationships and marriages are having problems men are having problems in these two uh, in uh, marriage and uh, relationships uh, and those problems concern erectile dysfunction so basically what are the causes of erectile dysfunction so we get deeper so what causes erectile dysfunction number one factor has to be psychology now a man is made up of the upstairs so what is happening in your mind is exactly what is coming out as the energy you portray to others okay so psychological factors i already talked about depression just shortly so depression is one factor that uh, will make you experience erectile dysfunction now the problem is once you are diagnosed or diagnosed with depression what do you do a doctor your doctor your favorite doctor will write a prescription for you which has antidepressants the doctor does not ask you what you eat the doctor does not ask you the nature of your job if it is stressing or stuff the doctor does not ask you the environment that you live in the doctor does not even uh, get concerned about what you do as a person he just goes ahead and writes your prescription and that prescription is basically an antidepressant prescription okay so now maybe you are fat or obese then you head here and the doctor writes you drugs for hypertension drugs for diabetes drugs for depression and this prescription is heavy so first of all this is what we call polypharmacy so your prescription has more than four types of drugs they are treating different conditions that are uh, orchestrated by you you go to the pharmacy and you purchase antidepressant drugs and these drugs that are written on that prescription little do you know that drugs for diabetes hypertension and all these conditions will just help you manage the symptoms but they don't treat the condition so you just lower blood sugar but you don't cure diabetes okay and diabetes is the cause of erectile dysfunction so once you lower the symptoms the disease is still being established and this is where the problem is that is where i have a problem with all these drugs that are supposed to treat diabetes hypertension and all these chronic conditions okay so point blank if uh, uh, if you are depressed you will have a problem in erection now you'll go to buy these antidepressants and these antidepressants one of the major side effects of antidepressants is erectile dysfunction okay same to drugs that are used to lower cholesterol the statins they cause erectile dysfunction so basically your prescription is full of drugs that are causing you problems than help so it is up to you to uh, handle your own health sexual health and both physical and uh, and, and well-being basically well-being as a man it's your role now <clears throat> once uh, you buy this antidepressant you get this erectile dysfunction you keep on taking those antidepressants because depression is in your mind depression is not is not a clinical condition is is a mental condition so it's up to you to get out of it so if you keep on taking these drugs then you will never get better okay because a man has to wake up from his dreams and go find what to do and solutions number two a factor on psychological factors is alcoholism so you take alcohol and it depresses your centers of sex some people take alcohol and they say alcohol boosts their sexual power now you are trying to uh, to handle short term uh, goals what about the long term because alcohol will cause you a fatty liver and a fatty liver will now uh, be limited in the synthesis of testosterone and that means you'll have low amounts of testosterone that will bring you erectile dysfunction so avoid alcohol basically and smoking number 3 factor uh, on the same psychological factors has to be anxiety basically men want to perform so every man wants to to be there for that woman sexually however that is enough to get you the anxiety yeah? sexual anxiety when you get that anxiety now you have the pressure to perform you are thinking that this woman needs me to perform so that pressure is enough to get you in problems 
you will end up uh, having erectile dysfunction and uh, possibly premature ejaculation. Then anxiety and guilt at the same time still works the same way as, uh, as uh, anxiety, so guilt and self-esteem. And then the major one has to be pornography and masturbation. Now, pornography makes you think that it's all about that video. However, the more you open these sites, the more you numb your sexual uh, centers in the brain. So pornography gives you these dopamine hits. You just have an ejaculation, you get the dopamine hits, and then you become addicted. And that's why it's hard to get a man off pornography. The same way it's hard to get a man off alcohol because you need these dopamine hits to make you feel good. Okay? So avoid pornography and masturbation at all costs if, again, you have to survive from erectile dysfunction. Then number two. So number one was psychological factors. Number two has to be metabolic factors. And what are metabolic factors? Metabolic factors are basically those chronic conditions that you get. Diabetes, hypertension, cancer, HIV and AIDS. All these conditions can come as a result of uh, uh, bad lifestyles or as a result of poor dieting. So you lower your immunity through these conditions. And these conditions are basically caused like diabetes, hypertension, cancer and stuff are basically uh, sourced from sugar. So every person who keeps on eating sugar, eating fruits and honey, you will end up here. Again, as a result of the liver damage and also as a result of the effects of sugar in the body. Okay? So be careful with the metabolic conditions like thyroid disease, obesity, diabetes mellitus, and these conditions. These are the ones that affect uh, your, your stability as a man and your sexual agility. Then number three, apart from psychological, metabolic, then number three has to be the muscular and skeletal problems. So if you have muscle problems, you have you cannot erect. There's a muscle that connects bococcygeal muscle. This muscle weakens. Once it gets weak, then you cannot erect. And that's the reason why we tell people to go to the gym and perform heavy lifting and also Kegel exercises because they strengthen that muscle so you can have a proper erection. Then, okay, obesity falls under the same same because obesity causes muscle problems. Then, uh, the blood conditions like uh, sickle cell uh, can affect your muscles and can also affect your blood flow towards the penis. Therefore, you'll have this problem. Now, remember, the penis has blood vessels, a very huge capacity of blood vessels that supply nutrients and blood towards the penis. And the penis acts like a sponge. We put up a video about the male reproductive system and how it is affected uh, by uh, the drugs that like sildenafil. So these blood vessels on the penis, when they dilate, blood flows into the penis and the penis soaks this blood. That makes it rigid. So you get an erection. 